The red hand movement has been gaining steam lately. For those unaware of what this is, it's a movement about missing Indigenous women. I've had many requests for missing Indigenous people over the last, I don't know, year, year and a half. One really interesting thing I found is that I had trouble finding cases at all to cover. For instance, in 2016, there were 6,000 cases involving missing Indigenous women and only 100 were logged into NamUs. And there's a lot of reasons for this. Not to knock NamUs, as a society, we have done a better job in beginning to organize cases as we had previously. That said, I just wanted to take a moment to say we have a ways to go. You can find a link to the Native Hope Project in the description below. Melanie Marie James, missing from Farmington, New Mexico. Melanie Marie James was just 21 when she was last seen on April 20th, 2014. This was in Farmington, New Mexico. Melanie's sister saw her walking with an unidentified African-American man near McKinley Elementary School, which is in the vicinity of 20th Street and Butler Avenue. Melanie's plan was to enroll for classes that day at a local college and then apply for jobs, but she never arrived home. Her mother was adamant that this was not like her daughter at all, and so she drove around looking for her daughter until 3 a.m. She tried to place a missing persons report, but the police told her she has to wait 48 hours. So all she could do was keep looking, and she did. It actually brings up a really good point about that rule, though. Her mother pointed out that there is a better chance of finding her if they start looking right away. And it's true. I'm sure it's meant to avoid unnecessary manpower. But for those that are really missing and are in trouble, it's a huge detriment. It might make the difference between somebody living and not living. Melanie's sister would go back to the spot she saw Melanie at, but unfortunately she just wasn't able to locate her. It's been reported that Melanie was seen a year later at the Dollar Tree, so it's possible it's part of a trafficking situation. When Melanie went missing, she was 21 and she was 5 feet tall and around 116 pounds. She has a tattoo of a spade on her right index finger. Melanie Marie James has been missing for nine years. If she's still alive, she would be 30 years old today. Shakaya Blue Harding, missing from Billings, Montana. Shakaya Harding goes by her middle name of Blue. She was last seen in Billings, Montana walking on Buena Vista Drive around 4 p.m. on July 23, 2018. Her mother reported her missing on August 20th of that same year. Unfortunately, it was about a month before anyone realized that she was gone. The reason no one knew she was missing was that she'd been living on the streets throughout most of the spring and the summer of that year. She'd been having some mental health struggles, and she was described as behaving erratically. Definitely doesn't help that mental health assistance is barely accessible in Billings, Montana. As it's the largest city in the state, it should probably have more access than it does. The largest hospital in Montana decided that mental health should look like a conveyor belt. I suspect probably other states are the same as this. We always blame mental health for things that are going wrong, but we don't do anything to fund it. 2017 tax cuts brought back the money that was coming into the government, so the government in turn cut back on all of the mental health care, at least in this state, but I do think it's probably the same everywhere. As a result, in Billings, Montana, a whole bunch of case managers that help people cut through the red tape, not only do they help people have better lives and live within the system and do what they need to to get medication or whatever it is, it keeps them out of the hospital. It actually costs more to cut back some of those supports. Well, all that funding was cut. And now that job that I had doesn't even exist anymore at all. But as a society here in the United States, we just keep doing it. As for Blue, she was struggling. Her family notes that she had ties to Fort Riley, Kansas, as well as to New Mexico. We also spent time on the Fort Belknap Reservation in Montana. So no one knows for certain who she left with or if she even left with anyone. She weighed 125 pounds when she was last seen, and she's about 5 foot 4. In addition to having some mental health challenges, she's been known to self-medicate, though it's not clear exactly what type of drug she was using. It's also noted that she could be going by the last name of Harding. Shakaya Blue Harding has been missing for four years. 
If she's still alive today, she would be 24. Frida knows his gun, missing from Kennewick, Washington. Frida was last seen in Walmart in Kennewick, Washington in October of 2016. At this time, she called a friend in Billings, Montana to ask for an online money transfer with the goal being to get her from Kennewick back to Crow Agency, Montana. The Crow Reservation is 700 miles away from Kennewick. He said she wanted to make it back home to take her kids trick-or-treating. The friend agreed and they sent her the money. The friend would follow up 15 minutes later to see if the money had arrived. But at this time, it's reported that the phone was no longer working. It's also worth noting that her friend accidentally misspelled Frida's name, which is a big deal when you're sending it through money transfer. The misspelling, however, that day actually kept her from being able to pick it up. And so it appears she left because the store was closing for the evening. The friend corrected it and assumed that Frida would claim the money the next day, but it didn't happen. A missing persons report was filed a month later, on November 14, 2016. Her friends had become especially alarmed as she missed her aunt's funeral. This appearing wasn't actually out of the question for Frida. It happened quite a bit, but it was only on the short term and not on the long term. And she always stayed in touch with her family. And the fact that she missed a family member's funeral was a pretty big deal and not at all like her. Her family would say they don't see her doing this unless something was really wrong. One article I read suggested that this is a common problem in many of these cases. They fall between the cracks because they are in different areas and people aren't even aware there's a problem. Frida, when she was last seen, had brown hair, brown eyes, and a long scar on her right elbow. There's a tattoo on her back between the shoulder blades and it has the names Lyrical, Trinity, and Mason. She also has a tattoo of Mickey Mouse with a basketball on her right calf, a flower with initials on her right shoulder, and a banner with her last name on her upper right arm. Frida's mother would end up raising her grandchildren. They're now a high school junior, a fifth grader, and the third has since graduated. When last seen, Frida was five foot five and around 150 pounds. Frida knows his gun has been missing for six years. If she's still alive, she would be 40 years old today. Mary Johnson Davis from the Tulalip Reservation in Washington State. Mary was 39 years old when she was last seen on November 25, 2020, walking on Fire Trail Road inside the Tulalip Reservation. Mary had been living at the home of her sister in Cedro Woolley, Washington, along with her husband. Then one day, she just up and left, moving 40 miles away to Marysville, Washington. She would only rarely respond to texts, and she pretty much stopped answering phone calls. Then suddenly, her husband, who is now listed as estranged, would report her missing, saying he hadn't seen her in weeks. Her family has since stated that Mary and her husband weren't at a good place, and that's why she left and started staying with friends, only returning to their home every few days to pick up mail and shower. Mary is five foot six and weighed around 115 pounds when she was last seen. She has tattoos on both upper arms, one of which is the one shown here, the sun. She has a birthmark on the back of her neck. It's also noted that she may wear eyeglasses. Mary Johnson has been missing for two years. If Mary's still alive, she would be 41 today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss new episodes. So if you enjoy the content here and you're not sure, take a peek to see if you're subscribed. Take care of yourselves and each other.